Good morning, guys. Good morning, guys. So, just waking up, just bear with me. So, today we're going to get into um, this book uh, that we talked about yesterday. Um, I'm going to read the one for this one today, too. Um, the devotional for a little bit out of this one also. But we're going to focus mostly on this one. And then we'll get into this one. But I will read some from here today so we can start our first day off like that. Okay, so this is The Joy of Resurrection. Um, it's from Beverly Courage. Hope I didn't um, mess up her name. And then also these are the um, contributions from these. I won't read them all. And I'll just... Um, show you guys this here and then let me go to the back hold on a second guys and that's how the back looks okay so it's the Joy of Resurrection, devotionals written and edited by Beverly Courage, photographs by David and Stephanie Edmondson. So, as you guys know, our theme for this month is joy. We've been talking a lot about joy, a lot of Bible scriptures and verses and uh, decrees and different things about joy and um, spiritually and practically about joy. So, um, we're going to be reading this book throughout this month and then once we finish it we're going to get more into this one like i was telling you guys well when i showed you guys that yesterday and thank you guys for you that voted too so um on this page it's talking about uncommon virtue a tribute and love and memory of donald r block when they're born living and then this is just the copyrights i'm showing all of this now because once we read I'm just going to be focused for it on, um, hold on guys, what did I just do? It's early guys, y'all bear with me a second. I'm just going to focus on reading. And these are the contents, I won't read them because it's a lot, I know we usually do, but I'm going to read them as we go. You guys that are familiar with us reading books together, you know, we start from the beginning, then we work our way up until we finish the book so here's what some of the devotionals will be talking about guys and we'll get a chance to read them it tells you who wrote it and what it's titled okay let's read acknowledgments oh guys i'm trying to fix the light now it's early so it's on eye comfort mode Okay, special thanks to David and Stephanie Edmondson for sharing this inspiring collection of photographs with me and the readers of this book. Thank you, too, to the list of beloved authors and others whose words indeed add to the reader's joy of resurrection. I would turn it, like, the long way, but I think I may do that in the next video. I don't want to do it because I had already started recording like this, and then it's flipped sideways and you guys really can't see it. But I may um, turn it the long way the next time so you guys can see both of the pictures. Okay, thank you too to the list of beloved authors and others whose words indeed add to the reader's joy of resurrection. And always, blessings to Janet, Tama, and everyone at Thomas Nelson. Thank you for your confidence in me and for allowing me the joy of yet another testimony to the glory of God, especially the joy of resurrection. So we're going to get now to the introduction, then we'll get into this, and I'll show you guys the pictures and everything like that. Okay, introduction. The psalmist wrote, Be still and know that I am God. Psalms 46.10 When I stand in the midst of God's creation and reflect on the detail and majesty of his hand and everything around me, I am always awed that his gift of the earth's beauty is my present salvation. This beauty is but a glimpse of what will come when I am resurrected with my Lord in eternity. 
Do you have this assurance? Can you be still and know that he is your God? Having this assurance, do you often take time to be still with him? Photographers David and Stephanie Edmondson captured these moments of stillness in God's presence on the edge of a seashore, standing on mountains, surrounded by an aspen forest, or gazing at flickering candlelight with beautiful images that will move you to reflect on who God is and who you are because of what he did for you and me. It is my hope that through this book of inspiring devotions from many of your favorite authors, along with this special collection of David and Stephanie Edmondson's photography, you will seek time to be still and experience the joy of resurrection. Okay, so we're going to start with the incarnation is a thing too wonderful by Elizabeth Elliot. And here's the picture. So I'll leave it on the picture as I read for this one. Okay. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen by angels, preached among the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received up in glory. That's 1 Timothy 3.16 in KJV. Some things are simply too wonderful for explanation. The navigational system of the Arctic Turn, for example. How does it find its way over 12,000 miles of ocean from its nesting grounds in the Arctic to its wintering grounds in the Antarctic? Okay, what is, let me see. Ornithologists have conducted all sorts of tests without finding the answer instinct is the best they can offer instinct is the best they can offer no explanation at all merely a way of saying that they really have no idea a lacen albatross one second guys i'm so sorry guys my side y'all know you sleep well sometimes a lacen albatross was once released 3200 miles from its nest in the midway islands it was back home in 10 days the migration of birds is a thing too wonderful when the angel gabriel told mary you will be with child and give birth to a son she had a simple question about the natural how can this be since i am a virgin the answer had to do not with the natural but with something far more mysterious than the turn's navigation something in fact entirely supernatural the holy spirit will come upon you and the most high will overshadow you luke 135 niv that was too wonderful and mary was silent she had no question about the supernatural she was satisfied with god's answer excuse me guys the truth about the incarnation is a thing too wonderful for us who can fathom what really took place first in a virgin's womb in nazareth and then in the stable in bethlehem mary's acceptance of the angel's answer to her innocent question was immediate though she could not imagine the intricacies and mysteries of its working in her young virgin body guys i can't control the lightning it's on eye comfort mode until a certain time so unfortunately it's going to continue to do that so if you guys could just listen and um you know pay attention to the screen i'll continue to read so um okay she surrendered herself utterly to god and trust in obedience do you understand what is going on in the invisible realm of your life with god do you see how the visible things relate to the hidden plan and purpose probably not as my second husband, Addison Leach, used to say, you can't unscrew the unscrutable, but you do see at least one thing, maybe a very little thing that he wants to do. Now what I'm commanding you today, it's not too difficult. Other translations say too hard, too wonderful for you or beyond your reach. It is up to heaven, nor is it beyond the sea. No, the word is very near you it is in your mouth and in your heart so you may obey it deuteronomy 30 11 through 14 niv let it suffice you 
as it sufficed Mary to know that God knows. If it's time to work, get on with your job. If it's time to go to bed, go to sleep in peace. Let the Lord of the universe do the worrying. From a quiet, from keep a quiet heart. And then it says, God incarnate in Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him, and he is before all things, and in him all things consist. That's Colossians 1, 15 through 17. Tomorrow we're going to pick up Lord's will, the humility of Christ. Excuse me, but now we're going to get into this one, Grace for the Moment. And we're going to focus more in the other one until we finish reading it. But I do want to read this one for today, okay? Because it's a 365 uh, inspirational thoughts for each day of the year. Grace for the Moment by Max Licato. Now, um, I'm not going to read the prefits for this. But I do want to come from, um, no, you know what? I'm going to read the prefits. We're going to read um, these as well. And then we'll read um, the one for January for today. See, it has it like the dates. But we'll read January th today for today. And then once we really get into the book, we'll go back to the beginning and just read it like that. And then the dates that we're on. So let's start with this one. Grace for the moment. Grace for the moment. I'll just put it like this. Like I said, we'll come back to it when we really get into this book. Okay, let's read the preface. When I travel with my kids, I keep all the tickets in a satchel. When the time comes to board the plane or train, I stand between the attendant and the child. As each child passes, I place a ticket in her hand. She, in turn, gives a ticket to the attendant. God does the same. He stands between us in our need, waiting to help us. For that reason, the Bible says, Let us boldly approach the throne of our gracious God, where we may receive mercy and his grace to find timely help. Hebrews 4.16 Excuse me, did you note those last two words? Timely help, not too soon nor too late, just on time. Just as it's my job to make sure my children have what they need, God will make sure you have what you need. From his hand, you will receive timely help. And who knows, he may use these pages to give it. Special thanks to Terry Gibbs for overseeing this project. Also, thanks to my friend and assistant, Carrie Hill, for pouring over the pages. Appreciation goes to Jack Countryman for his enthusiastic support and great golf tips. And to you, the reader, how kind of you to invite me into your world. May God use these daily encounters to give you more of him, to give your, you grace for the moment. Max Lucado in January 2000. So let's talk about each day. Excuse me, guys. It's quiet. It's early. My coffee is hot. The sky is still black. The world is still asleep. The day is coming. In a few moments, the day will arrive. It will roar down the track with the rising of the sun. The stillness of the dawn will be exchanged for the noise of the day. The calm of solitude will be replaced by the pounding pace of the human race. The refuge of the early morning will be invaded by decisions to be made and deadlines to be met. For the next 12 hours, I will be exposed to the day's demands. It is now that I must make a choice. Because of Calvary, I'm free to choose. If so, I choose. I choose love. No occasion justifies hatred. No injustice warrants bitterness. I choose love. Today I will love God and what God loves. And for some of you that want to write these notes, maybe you have this book, maybe you want to write notes or you want to screenshot or just pause and take notes. I think that's a great idea, but it's up to you. You can just listen also. Okay, I choose joy. I will invite my God to be the God of circumstance. I will refuse the temptation to be cynical because it can also be like a prayer and decree, but it's what he, he put, you know, the tool of the lazy thinker. 
I will refuse to see people as anything less than human beings created by God. I will refuse to see any problem as anything less than an opportunity to see God. I choose peace. I will live forgiven. I will forgive so that I may live. I choose patience. I will overlook the inconveniences of the world. Instead of cursing the one who takes my place, I will invite him to do so. Rather than complain that the wait is too long, I will thank God for a moment to pray. Instead of clenching my fists at new assignments, I will face them with joy and courage. I choose kindness. I will be kind to the poor, for they are alone. Kind to the rich, for they are afraid. And kind to the unkind, for such is how God has treated me. I choose goodness. I will go without a dollar before I take a dishonest one. I will be overlooked before I will boast. I will confess before I will accuse. I choose goodness. I choose faithfulness. Today I will keep my promises. My debtors will not regret their trust. My associates will not question my word. My wife will not question my love. Well, that's his wife, but you know if you um, are a lady, then you can say your husband. Okay, my wife will not question my love, and my children will not or never fear that their father will not come home. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. I choose gentleness. Nothing is won by force. I choose to be gentle. If I raise my voice, may it be only in praise. If I clench my fist, may it be only in prayer. If I make a demand, may it be only of myself. I choose self-control. I am a spiritual being. After this body is dead, my spirit will soar. I refuse to let what will rot rule the eternal. I choose self-control. I will be drunk only by joy. I will be impassioned only by my faith. I will be influenced only by God. I will be taught only by Christ. I choose self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And these are fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5, right? To these I commit my day. If I succeed, I will give thanks. If I fail, I will seek His grace. And then when this day is done, I will place my head on my pillow and rest. And that's Max Lucado when God whispers your name. So this is January. It says, I cry out to the Lord. I pray to the Lord for mercy. Psalms 142.1. But we're going to go to the one for today, which is the 12th. Let's read the one for today, which is the 12th. Okay, January 12th. Who is the servant? Luke 10, 40 through 42, NKJV. Martha was distracted with much serving, but Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 40 through 42. Martha is worried about something good. She's having Jesus over for dinner. She's literally serving God. Her aim was to please Jesus. But she made a common yet dangerous mistake. As she began to work for him, her work became more important than her Lord. What began as a way to serve Jesus slowly and subtly became a way to serve self. She has forgotten that the meal is to honor Jesus, not Martha. It's easy to forget who was the servant and who was to be served. And then it says he still moves stones. Grace for the moment. So that's going to conclude our devotional reading. I'll see you guys back tomorrow. Lord's will, either tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening. God bless. I love you guys. And y'all have a beautiful day.